言うことは一つだけ絶対負けねえ俺様の託されドンピシャだぜ How's it going, everyone? This is Nothing Excess with a new player analysis here for the Dream Collection. It's Fei Shang, the mysterious bird flies across the pitch. Uh, also, we'll be having uh, Makoto Soda, uh, the pitch cutting razor, who is the only player I haven't reviewed yet in this Dream Collection. So, without any further delay, let's get started. First off, with Fei Shang. At first glance, a member of the 10k club and shooting doesn't really sound like much, right? But there's plenty of upside here. He has an S high ball skill with 475 momentum, which is really nice. He has a 30% catch killer passive, a 2% Japanese debuff, 80% high ball request, 5% stronger during full power, and a 3 buff, 3% buff to all other non-Japanese Asian players, including himself. And that all adds up to something that's pretty decent. So what does that mean? It means that without any buffs outside of full power, it means you're throwing an 80.6k header check at, say, Dreamfest Genzo, or World Cup Mueller if he tries to catch, or Dreamfest Espada. And with his debuffs and other features, he's a great mixed red player to splash into on the bench. Um, there is just a lot of things to like about this uh, Feishang. A lot of people are concerned that maybe um, uh, his skill might not be worth investing in, his main skill. And I, to that I say, this has been the main skill that Feishang has had since he's come out, right? I don't think they're going to release a much better header for him. Uh, 475 is already um, pretty top tier in terms of momentums for a skill. And on top of that, Feishang is a character that has a uh, very good on high balls pretty much across all of his versions so i think investing here is not a terrible idea pros he buffs non-japanese asians debuffs opposing japanese players kills catching goalkeepers has 10k shot 9.2k dribble and 9.4k tackle and is reasonably fast at 6.2k speed he is good at high balls and requests them at an eight percent rate he has a great plus 15 to red forward am team skill with 10 percent to other red players uh as well uh, it's pretty much the uh, the uh, high school, actually no, it's, I think this is the middle school Kazuo's team skill also. Uh, he gets that once he hit an ability of us, which is quite nice. Now for Kanzi, I have a I have few complaints, honestly. Um, he's really solid and flexible as a clearly defined role as a counter to catching keepers. He'll be less effective, obviously, against punchers, um, which means that even though he hard counters maybe Dreamfest Genzo, he is, in fact, hard countered in return by, uh, for example, like a uh, Dreamfest Wakashimazu. For his limit break, uh, dribble, speed, shot, power, 25 is really all you need to think of. He is a forward. His roles are a uh, striker, uh, debuff, and counter. Uh, I rate him an S, and if you can use this player in a team right now, I would consider going for broke for him. But I think it's hard to determine what kind of teams he would actually be good on. Uh, and he primarily would be like a counter player that you sit on your bench to start. So I don't know if he's worth going for broke for. It just really depends on what your needs are. Let's look at his hidden abilities. First off, we got high ball request. Uh, I rate that an S. If it was guaranteed 100%, it'd be broken and he'd be broken. And that would be an SS skill. 80% is still great and nigh unbeatable. It's just that RNG can now find a way to screw you out of a win. Opponent's stats minus 2%. I rate that double S. Listen, anytime you debuff uh, an archetype is great. And he debuffs Japan by 2%. And that's valuable regardless of where the debuff comes from. Um, pedal to the metal. Uh, a, you know, it's pretty nice. It's just a, a free 5% bump during full power. It's nice, but not game breaking. Skill killer, also A, is a 3% bump in stats when you're facing a green player. Which, I mean, like, pedal of the metal, it's nice, but it's not exactly game breaking. Uh, and then my team, all stats plus 2%, uh, rating S. If there were more viable non Japanese Asian players, I could really see this, uh, or rather, I could really see a greater use for people using this. But for now, it's just a neat way to make Chinese, Arabian, Korean, and Thai players a bit more buff. If only they had a good goalkeeper, they might be a viable archetype, but they don't, so, you know, it is what it is. Anyways, let's take a quick look at his stats. As you can see, 1,054 stamina is paired with nice dribble and shot and interestingly nice tackle. And he has a ton of physical stats, actually. His power is really high at 8.3k and 6.2k speed uh, with high ball 25%, which means that his dribble is 9.3k total, his shot is 10.2k total, and his tackle is 9.4k total. Everything else is kind of pointless on this character. He's really bad at passing, he's easy to white pass over, so it is what it is. For his skill build, uh, he comes with Mysterious Bird Jumping Header. Uh, if you want to give him the Rainbow Header shot from another version, you can. Uh, then I would keep his high power dribble and long legged tackle because those are all the things he's good at. And then if you have a, co a copy of Avian Attack, I would give it to him just as an option. It's not necessary because frankly you're not 
ne ever going to really want to use Rainbow Header attack. I mean, Ra Rainbow Header shot or Avian attack. Really, the meat and potatoes for success with this phase to send him into the uh, send him a ball in the box that he can slam into the goalkeeper for an extra 25% on top of whatever extra benefits he might reap for f uh, for facing a catching goalkeeper. Still, it doesn't hurt to have backup plans, right? So keep them leveled up if you can. His A skills are both nice. He can't pass the ball anyway, so focus on leveling up the dribble and tackle up so he can harass defenders and dribble when needed. Next up, we've got Makoto Soda, the pitch cutting razor. Uh, he's one of the best raw tacklers in the game that's somewhat held back by the fact that his S tackle that he comes with is quite bad. It's less efficient stamina wise than a plain old razor tackle, but it has the same momentum, which almost feels like a mistake. Uh, it's not like there's any benefit to that, right? The foul rate's the same too, so it's just. It, it feels like you're being tricked for leveling up. It's just a different and cool animation, I guess, but it's 20 more stamina for the same tackle, which is like, ugh. Stamina the Clue is quite nice on him though, uh, and he's old enough that maybe in a few months we might see the old Dream Collection players all get cool hidden abilities, which might help him be less trashy as a result in the long run. Time will tell because, listen, he's a one-trick pony with what would be a hell of a trick if the trick's momentum was any good. Pros, second best tackler in the game by raw stats at 12.2k, and he has acceptable pass at 8.1k, and 6.3k speed actually makes him pretty nimble. Now for cons, he's not good at much else. His pass cut 7.9k and he'd love to have more, while well, his block is pathetic at 6.5k and he has no dribble to speak of. 420 momentum tackle is really pathetic when there's tackles out there on characters with similar stats that reach almost 475, you know, like his colleague Matsuyama. If his momentum was better, he'd be a better bully. It's not, so he's not. He, let's see, his limit break, tackle, and speed 25-25, obviously. For his pass, intercept, and technique, though, do a 17-17-16 breakdown so that you can have some intercept to deal with opponents. For his position, he is a defender solely. His role is as defense. He doesn't really participate in offense like a fullback. He's really just a full defender. I rate him an A. I would not go for broke for him unless you're desperate for a defender on the wing. For his stamina, 157. As you can see, his dribble is absolutely abysmal. Uh, and his other stats are kind of whatever, but his tackle is crazy high. It's just He invested all of his dribbling into tackling instead. That does mean that uh, his stats are kind of whatever, again, except for the 8.1k pass and the 12.2k tackle, which is pretty high. 7.9k intercept is almost decent. If it was at least 8, it would feel, it would just feel better because the number's prettier, but really it's basically 8, so whatever. For a skill build, S double bladed razor tackle is what you come with. You wish it was actually razor tackle, so you, if you do have a copy of it that you don't care about, Giving him that is good. A Razor Pass, B Razor Shot, and A Swift Interception. Uh, B Razor Shot is primarily for clearing the ball. Uh, and if you do want to give him an S Razor Interception because you have a spare, uh, feel free to. Um, only if you're going to level it up to S30 though, uh, for some reason. And only if you're really, really, really trying to have a secondary option other than tackling. If you want to, give him S Razor Tackle instead of leveling his S1 because at the very least, you can save some stamina there. Later on, if a better tackle comes, you can pass a leveled one to another version of Soda if you so like. Since this Soda isn't very good at much else, you're better off just focusing on the tackle using it to full, fully bully the ball out of opponents, even though it's missing the momentum to really be a huge proper bully with it. Anyways, everyone, uh, thank you all for checking out this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, please go ahead and click the like button and leave a comment telling me what you think of these players or of the video. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to check out the rest of the channel. And if you would like to know when I upload new content, don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon to be notified of when new videos or posts are made. If you would like to monetarily support the channel, you can leave me a one-off tip by clicking on the Streamlabs link in the description. Or you can join my Patreon community to enjoy the unique benefits available to my Patreon subscribers by following the Patreon link below. Thank you guys for checking this out, and I hope to see you all soon. Did everyone leave yet? Is, is everyone gone? Okay, so some of you may have noticed that this video runs a little longer and that there was a weird question mark in the beginning. That's because uh, we're going to talk about a character that is a Dream Championship character that you may have forgotten, and everyone did forget. And I'm going to give some shout-outs to someone who did remember, uh, and I've been kind of wanting to do a video on this guy for a long time, so now is a good time. Let's talk about Hikaru Matsuyama, the Indomitable Spirit. I feel like I need to remind you about this player and that he exists because Captain Numero Uno on Reddit, Capitan Numero Uno on Reddit went ahead and reminded everyone about him, so now that the secret's out, let's talk. Remember that the Dream Championship is a mode where you try to fit in a bunch of effective players or throwaways under a 720k power cap, so you're looking for inefficiencies. This is a character which you limit break a specific way and then you reap the benefits of a 440 momentum ego pass, uh, S eagle pass, 342 uh, A50 smooth ball keeping, 459 uh, S30 eagle tackle, 
405 A50 Eagle Intercept and 381 A50 Avalanche Attack. All hidden abilities and buffs are technically 1.5 times as good on him as on any other player. So anytime you buff his stats, pretend that you're actually buffing them way more than they should be. Uh, so since he is actually much more efficient at taking hidden abilities and buffs, um, removing skills to put on him for just for the stream championship is an incredibly good idea, especially if those skills are leveled up. Pros, he's a true skill monkey through and through. His out of matchup contributions are low due to bad stats, but he's crazy excellent uh, in matchup utility because all his skills are one and a half times as strong. It transforms him into a utility midfielder or fullback out of uh, a defensive position. Um, access to Eagle Pass gives him a great long distance option to enable forwards, and he only is 39k in stats after limit breaking. Uh, that's I can't stress that enough. He has 39,000 stats once you limit break him. That means that you're going to limit break him for a bunch of stats because you kind of want to boost his base stats by a bunch. Uh, it's almost like it's like 700 and something to six different stats. And he's still only going to hit 39,000. If you're trying to make a Rainbow Japan team or you're trying to properly put together a Red Japan team for this event, this is the way to go. Um, though for his cons, he is easy to white pass over and he desperately wants big buffs to really get the most out of his quirky playstyle. Uh, you may need to be in a matchup to safely get rid of the ball. However, since you are going to want to give him S Eagle Pass anyway, uh, you really, really, really do want those matchups because that will be a long distance pass you can use to really counterattack with uh, so long as you are careful and meticulous about picking your matchups with this player. Um, a lot of you are not going to understand to the full extent just how good this player is until you see it happen or until I show you some numbers so that you can think about him in a different way. So we're going to do that. For his limit break, uh, 17, 17, 16 to both the dribble tackle speed row and the pass intercept technique row. He is a defensive midfielder and a defender. His roles are defense, utility, and enabler. Um, I rate him an S only for the Dream Championship. He's not quite so good outside of it because he requires skills to be very, very, very high level to be efficient. Uh, and you can't go for broke for him anymore. If you don't have any more like me, uh, you're kind of screwed. Anyways, let's look at his base stats. As you can see, his base stats are atrocious. 910 stamina is not bad, but everything else is garbage. 4700 dribble, blah. 4200 speed, blah. That results in 6.8k dribble as his absolute highest stats and 6.1k tackle. Right now you're thinking, what the hell is wrong with you? Alright, so let's talk about how the stats and uh, momentums interact. Uh, if you multiply, if you're multiplying the momentum of a skill, uh, think of it this way. It's almost as if you were multiplying the stats instead but only when you're using a skill all right so if you're with me and you're remembering what i just said this would be his effective stats if you were using him uh in the way that i've just described right so if if you were to think of it like if you were to think of multiplying his skill momentums and instead you were just multiplying his stats by the same amount it, it's the same thing except that it only works for skills i don't know if that is 100 percent clear I don't know if I'm making myself 100% clear. If I'm not making myself clear enough, uh, go into the comments and leave me a comment and tell me, hey, you weren't clear enough. Could you please re really explain to me why this is mathematically? And I will try to break it down for you, but this is basically math. It doesn't matter which of the two sides you multiply, uh, the total in the end is also multiplied, right? Because multiplication, uh, since you determine the total stat by multiplying the momentum by the stat, uh, it doesn't matter where that 1.5 comes from uh, or wh what that 1.5 multiplies. In the end, it's going to affect the whole number. So you can just multiply by the stats instead if it helps you visualize it easier. So in that case, if you think of it this way, then his dribble is only for the only for uh, special skills. Just remember that in game, it's going to look like the special skills higher. Uh, so if you think about it, what's going to end up happening is that the base number otherwise would be like dribble 10.2k, pass 8.2k, tackle 9.1k, intercept 8.3k. And so if you're starting to see what that turns into, then you'll really get it. And because he is one and a half times more efficient when limit broken, after you limit break him, his stats turn into 11.9k, oh actually almost 12k on dribble, 
9.9k on pass, 10.9k on tackle, and 10.1k on intercept. Now understand that this is only specifically for uh, when taking into consideration what the special skill will do. Obviously in game, the special skill number is what changes, but if, again, if you just imagine that the special skill number didn't change and instead it changed the stats, uh, just if you know the value for what like S30 Eagle Pass is, imagine that just base S Eagle S30 Eagle Pass is actually being multiplied by 9.9k, and then you start understanding what the effect is. Um, a lot of people kind of can't wrap their heads around this, which is why this character is severely undervalued by so many people. Some people are just carrying him around because they uh, they did the event out of just like habit. Um, and they didn't quite understand and like people like me i didn't think that the dream championship would be originally when they first announced um, or were like when we first heard any rumors of it that it would be the way it is which is a uh, stat capped and once i saw it was stat capped i was like oh crud i sacrificed my matsuyama to my dreamfest matsuyama for his dribble and i kind of really regret that now uh which it just really sucks i really wish i had kept this character around and I'm actually hoping that at some point they re-release him because he's an interesting character design and it would be really cool if they brought him back again but no seeing how K-Lab is uh, I don't think they will anyway skill build uh, he comes with a smooth ball keeping and we just described which skills you're gonna put on him S Eagle pass S Eagle tackle a Eagle intercept and a avalanche attack he is very expensive to build he's not easy to build I remember telling people for a long time that I would tell him tell them how this project turned out Unfortunately, I ended up getting rid of him because I desperately needed his dribble for Dreamfest Matsuyama for uh, the Dream Cup and for some other stuff. I never really thought he'd be useful in the end, and it's a decision I greatly regret now as he's one of several characters who really, really makes Rainbow Japan very strong in the Dream Collection. It lets you lower the power cap by over 10,000. Um, that's super valuable. A lot of people were like stuck, like, what can I make weaker so that I can fit more players? You could put this Matsuyama at defensive midfielder along with the chest Akai. The red one from the Samurais. The, that one gets stronger with Red Aoi, which wants Japanese players on the field. And this guy is super low on stats, but just gets stronger by virtue of how his skills work. And suddenly you have a hilariously interesting uh, defensive midfield. You could throw this actually on the left or the right side of the defense instead. And instead, in the middle, you could put the the uh, the Akai that uh, has hidden ability and the, Matsu the Misugi that does hidden ability. And uh, you probably can, if you're creative about your other players, like you also use uh, the the green Stormy Resurrection, if you manage to get that, you have a Japanese team that's probably going to skirt under the regulations pretty comfortably. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a little bit harder. You might have to run like, uh, because you can't run people out of position. Uh, so you're going to end up struggling on like where you're going to hide uh, Takeshi, because Takeshi makes uh, Hyuga strong enough. and. Takeshi is pretty low number of, uh, like he's not particularly big on numbers or whatever. Uh, it'll be hard to fit characters like uh, Tsubasa and Misaki who really want to be together in almost every team. Maybe you don't run a Misaki at all, it will feel real awkward when you do that. Uh, also you're trying to find spots to put in Roberto, stuff like that. It's all doable but it, it's, it's a little more difficult than it looks so you will wind up with that problem. But either way, uh, if once you properly invest in him, he'll be a problem every matchup that opponents will not respect until he's taken the ball back for your team once or twice. Uh, so I frankly, I really do think that S is a solid rating for him. Only for this specific utility, right? Like maybe in a regular game, he's not as useful. I tried preaching to Bay that this character was really good and I had to really drive home the point that without the skills leveled up, he's not he's non-existent. But once the skills are leveled up, He's one of those characters that you don't realize is good until he hits like the breaking point upon which he's like an obnoxious piece of garbage that you have to deal with every time he matches up with you. So people are going to be like why passing over him every time and just giving you free 10% full power because they just don't want to deal with him. They, and later in the game when you give him the ball to go into a matchup, people are just going to be frustrated because maybe they're not going to be able to deal with the fact that he S Eagle passes all the way to the forward who is just right in the right position to beat a, a, a whatchamacallit, a offside trap, because it's a long, it's a no distance decay pass. The only character in the game that can get a, a no distance decay pass is Matsuyama. And here is a version that can abuse that by putting the S30 on a version that will make the S30 one and a half times stronger than it normally is. 
this guy is like the unsung hero of the Dream Championship. I really wish more players were playing him. And maybe by doing this, I will encourage more players to give him a shot. So I want to see what you guys think of that. So leave a comment of what you think about this Matsuyama and see you guys later.